Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ask the Experts. Uh, we are so appreciative of you being here um, right now with us, or if you're watching this at a later time, we're so happy that you're joining us. And uh, to get us started, I thought it would be interesting to think about something like, what if I told you there was a miracle pill created by a Nobel Prize winning scientist that would make your body younger, half your risk of dying prematurely of heart disease, optimize your energy, your strength, and bolster your bone density. Would you take it? I, I mean, I would be a taker on that. <laughs> Well, what if it wasn't a miracle pill, but it was a lifestyle choice? Well, here today is our guest, Anthony Campitelli, <clears throat> and he is going to share insights on how exercise is that magic pill, that magic bullet that's going to help our longevity and quality of life. Anthony has a master's in exercise science. Uh, he's also working on his PhD in exercise science and in statistics. He has publications that focus on physical function across lifespan and health consideration in cognitive decline. So a lot, a lot of good expertise here. Anthony, love for you to tell us a little bit more about maybe some fun facts about yourself and more about your professional experience. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the nice intro. It's the nicest thing anyone said about me for a while. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so professionally, um, I've done I've done several different things that that have you know, you know that are relevant here. I suppose um, I worked. Let's just start at the beginning. The first thing I did, kind of in this realm professionally, is I worked as a personal trainer. Um, a lot of personal trainer. A lot of the, the the job of being a personal trainer is being a good salesman, and that is something I am not. So I was not a personal trainer forever. Um, but I loved helping people, and I loved working with people, and that was sort of the thing that let me see what it was that I was really passionate about. I, I did not start down this academic road in my undergrad work. Um, I actually have an undergraduate degree in political science. Uh, so totally, totally unrelated to what I'm doing now. Um, but when I started personal training people, like, you know what? I may not be a good personal trainer, but I love helping people. I love helping them get to their fitness and health goals. So I kind of went down this route academically. Um, and after that, I worked as a strength and conditioning coach for a while at Eastern Washington University. Um, one of my one of my former athletes just caught the game winning pass in the Super Bowl, Cooper Cup. So that was really cool to see. I'm very very happy for him. But that kind of um, you know uh, broadened me out to the team side of things, right? Working in in the athletic context, directly working with athletes. Um, and I know that you know maybe necessarily none of us in this room right now are athletes. Maybe some of us are. Um, but really, the principles at the end of the day are kind of the same. So um, hopefully, I can you know talk from that experience as well. And, and, and not just that, but the, the, the coaching side of it as well, um, having some experience coaching, it kind of, at the end of the day, the, the principles are kind of the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're working with athletes or you're working with, you know, just regular, regular Joe individuals, it's, it's kind of the same thing at the end of the day. Um, also a lot different, but, but, but some of it is the same. Um, anyway, personally, I live out in Farmington. So most of you listening right now will know where that is. It's probably pretty close to where you're at. Um, if you don't know, it's just right outside of Fayetteville. Um, my wife and I have a house out there. It's me, my wife, our dog, Cola, and I have a pet duck, Edgar, and he lives in the house with us too. He, uh, he walks around, wears a diaper. So we got him. Um, but anyway, so there's some fun facts about me, uh, kind of a brief intro of what my bona fides are from this standpoint. So hopefully, hopefully that hopefully that gives me some kind of, of of juice to be able to talk to you and and have you listen to what I say at least. Yes, indeed. I I first I got to see this duck. That <laughs> is hilarious. He's right next to me. So <laughs> let's see let's see if I can get the camera to pick him up. That is hilarious. Oh, there he is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anthony, that is precious. I can't You're believe it. I, I, I have never heard of someone having a duck that lives in the home with them. <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to you more about this. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird deal, but I've, I've had him since he was uh, right out of the egg, and he's, he's, my, he's my best bud. Oh my gosh. Well, thanks for sharing a little bit about like your, your educational and professional background and your, your home life, what that's like for you. Uh, 
it sounds like you've always had this passion to really support others in achieving their best self, <laughs> best potential. So, yeah. Um, well, just to get into some of the things that might be on folks' minds is, you know, in the study, we have a range of ages from 48 all the way to like the late 70s. Um, and so in thinking about that, and we also have a lot of different sexes, male and females, uh, many share that concern about, you know, losing weight, um, losing their height, their bone mass, their stamina as they age. Um, and I, I can even relate to that on a personal note that um, being a 48 year old woman that I've had some concerns because I'm a little on the, I guess you would say the low end of the BMI. So a little bit closer to, you know, needing to put on some weight. And for me, it's that idea of feeling um, like I need to have some reserve to, for my future self. Uh, so this has kind of been a worry for me uh, as I'm heading into my fifties that, you know, gosh, I want to maintain my energy as an older person. I want to prevent falls. I, I want to have good physicality as I age. And I, I can imagine that, and I know in some of the sessions I have with participants in the study, they've expressed similar concerns um, with this. And I, I would just love to hear like what your advice would be to me. And maybe you can share even if, if this relates to you on a personal level yourself. Yeah, and I think it I think it relates to everyone, right? We all have our own sort of unique concerns and and drives moving forward or you know getting to the end of the road in our life in, in as healthy condition as we can. Um, yeah, and, and before I answer your question, I'm going to answer your question. Before I answer it, um, I just want to say um, you're in great shape. So I don't think you have a ton to worry about. Um, I, I hope I'm in your kind of shape when I'm 48. So keep up the good work. Um, but you 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 brought this idea up of building up a reserve. That's really important. Um, it's important in muscle, it's important in bone. The more of that stuff we build up at any point in our life, the better, because then we can carry it further into the future. And, you know, they say the, uh, uh, what, what is it? A, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Basically, it's the same thing with, when we're talking about body tissues too. If we can do something now to develop those things, much better off in the long run because it's just it, it is like a reserve right it's like we have a this reservoir that we have to draw from like a bank account and as we make withdrawals over time as we age our, our balance in our account goes down and down and down well we can we can always contribute more you know at some point you have to make a deposit and that's kind of hopefully what we can talk a little bit about today um, but from my standpoint of what of uh, you know kind of what my concerns are about myself um, just uh, being male um, I'm not a I'm not a small person. For those of you who have met me before, um, I do have some concerns of just heart disease, um, blood pressure. I've already started to see, um, you know, kind of negative blood lipids, things like that. And I mean, I'm someone who exercises all the time, and I and I eat pretty well. But those things just just happen as you get older. You know, um, I'm I'm starting to near kind of the bottom age range of our study here, and it's it's a uh, um, as, as I, as I approach my future, I look at that and say, how do, what am I going to best do to set myself up for success to where I'm able to maintain my health and not just increase my quantity of life, because we're pretty good at that with Western medicine, but I want to create, I want to increase my quant or I should my quality of life. Right. And if we, if you think about it, like a, like, like, like a graph, right. We, we, we kind of start up here. And then as we age, we kind of decline into old age. Well, that's kind of the kind of traditional model of how we might think about aging. But I like to think about aging like this. If I'm up here, I want to stay up there for as long as I can. And then when I get to the end, I just a steep drop off. I want it done at that point, you know? So with that's, that's always the goal is to stay at that high level of quality of life, that high level of functionality for as long as we can. Um, so we can stave off and push out that sort of decline that everybody, every, you know, we're all going to get there. Sorry to break it to everybody in the room, but um before we get there, we want to maintain that, that high standard for as long as we can. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's like that idea of let's just do our best to live, live large, live life, be healthy so that we, when we get to the end, we've, we've done it all. And we're like ready to go. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for lack of a better term, at the, at, at the end, I plan on just like powering down like a computer. I hope, I, I hope that's how I go. I, you know, 
not not everybody is so lucky most people aren't but um if the longer we the point is the longer we can maintain that state of good health um into our sort of twilight years the, the more quality of life we have and then I, I you know if I can I want to be a healthy 90 year old I want to be playing with my grandkids and you know, <laughs> so um hopefully I'm able to maintain that yeah yeah it's like either we'll be like a computer down like slowly shutting down or we're gonna go out in a blaze of glory you know <laughs> you yeah I mean regardless we we want like you said our twilight years our golden years we want them to be the quality of life just really um like you said put into that reserve put into that 401k for our future health yeah it is it is like a 401k right it's our it's our it's our you know personal ira for our you know for our later selves yeah. it's, a great, it's a great way to think about it so you know as we're getting into this topic i'm wondering what are the risks as we age and does our sex play a part in those risk factors yeah so uh, certainly and there's there's many risks you know and the unfortunate thing about aging is that you get older right there's there's you know, along the way, we do incur more risks. Um, we do incur, you know, um, generally a decline in our state of health. Um, although, like I said, we can hopefully stave that off for as long as possible. Um, but but those risks are impacted by a lot of individual factors. One of the biggest ones is sex, though. Um, it's certainly not the only, well, I, I should think it's definitely not one of the biggest ones. Uh, there's, there's, there's many other factors out there that are hugely important in terms of your health. Um, you know, obesity is, is probably the number one factor that negatively impacts our health. But one of the genetic factors that are beyond our control are sex. Um, and, and like I said, I brought up my, my sort of own example of, of I'm a male, I'm a big guy. Those are genetic things that I can't control. But unfortunately, those things predispose me to certain realities of, of aging and certain realities of negative health aspects. Um, um, so we'll start with males then. Males, for instance, uh, we tend to, um, we being males, tend to uh, incur much more risk of heart disease, cardiovascular disease, um, dyslipidemia, that's bad cholesterol, high, high triglycerides, things of that nature. Um, and I, I pulled some stats off the internet because I knew we were going to be talking about this. And I'd like to share them just to kind of point out these differences, maybe uh, quantitatively rather than just talking about them, as, you know, not uh, nominally. So when it comes to coronary heart disease, so that is the a disease of the blood vessels of the heart, and typically what we see what causes a heart attack. Um, men have two times the risk at any age of, of women of developing coronary heart disease and having a heart attack. Um, aortic disease, so a disease of the aorta, the largest blood vessel in our body, um, men have see four to six times the prevalence of that compared to, compared to women. And then heart failure, if you look at just the total cases of heart failure in America, men account for 60% of those cases. So again, these are definitely problems. There's definitely, you know, realistic concerns that men should have moving forward. This is, it's important to point out that these things are averages, right? I'm not talking about every, every man in the world is going to develop heart disease or anything like that. But when you think about risk, because you don't know what your future holds, it's important to look at those averages and say, do I just by dint of being me, do I have an increased risk? And, you know, if you're, unfortunately, if you got that Y chromosome and it comes to, uh, you know, cardiovascular disease, you do. I mean, on, on the flip side of that, ladies, you also have uh, increased risks of different conditions. The two largest of which that are going to be associated with aging are um, uh, osteo osteoporosis and sarcopenia. Osteoporosis being the progressive weakening of bones, um, typically thought about like as having brittle bones. Um, and then sarcopenia is a gradual decline in the amount of muscle mass and the amount of strength that you carry. Both of those things are, um, can be impactful of that quality of life that we talked about, right? Um, as osteoporosis um, progresses, you risk a lot if you have a fall or something like that. Um, and then as sarcopenia progresses, it just becomes hard to do the things that you would normally like to do in your life. So both of those things are a little bit more prevalent in females. Again, I pulled some stats here. Um, if we look at uh, in individuals, both males and females over 70 years old, um, the osteopenia rate. So that is, um, osteopenia is the stage before osteoporosis. So your bones are starting to degenerate a little bit, but they're not, they're, they're, they're not really porous and weak yet. Uh, but if we look at just the osteopenia rate, 
you see 16% uh, of, of humans, or excuse me, of, of females in that age group, 70 or above, have a diagnosis of osteopenia, but only 2% uh, of males have a diagnosis of osteopenia. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, excuse me, excuse me, I got the numbers backwards. Let me back up real quick. Osteopenia. Am I, am I seeing these charts? Uh, I'm not you're not. You're not. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you these things. Sorry. Um, so osteopenia, the, 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 the rate's higher because it has a lower threshold to get there. So I got that backwards. Osteopenia, the rate is 61% in females over 70, and only 18% of males will be diagnosed with osteopenia when they exceed 70 years old. Um, and then on the other side, osteoporosis, that sort of more progressed uh, form of bone loss, 16% of females over 70 year old, over 70 years, so over 70 years old are going to be experiencing that, um, while it, whereas only 2% uh, of males. So you can see the big sort of gulf there in the two, you know, in the two sides of things, biological sex plays a role in it, right? Now, does, should any of this mean that if I'm a male, I'm going to develop heart disease, or if I'm a female, I'm going to get osteoporosis? Absolutely not. All it means is that on average, your risk is higher. Now, hopefully what we can do here today is talk a little bit about that and give you some ideas of how you can uh, sort of approach that issue and, 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 and deal with it now before it becomes a problem. And um, just with the, you know, we, we do bone scans as part of this study and most of the people in this room have, have been in the lab. I would assume everyone's been in the lab and had their, uh, uh, you know, the DEXA scan done. So we've seen your bone mineral density and I, everyone I've seen, you're, you're, you're not in the danger zone. So y'all have time. There's still, you know, there's there, we, we can still make deposits into that bank account. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this, this is a good point from Paula. Um, women's risk for heart disease does increase significantly as you age. And actually um, heart disease outcome actually starts to even out at the, at the, at the kind of the far end of the aging spectrum in the nineties, but pretty much the whole way prevalence is going to go up commensurately and, and men are always going to be at more risk. So yes. And, and so the, you kind of see both variables impacting it, right? It's not just strictly males and females. It's also age as well, because it doesn't, you know, if you're, if you are a, um, you know, a 20 year old female or 20 year old male, there's like, you know, a 0% chance that either of you has osteoporosis, as the, as, you know, at that age, but as the age starts to increase, that's when we start to see those differences start to appear. Yeah. Thanks to Anthony for sharing all those statistics. And for everyone that's um, joining us here tonight, we will, um, I'll, I'll get some notes out to you in case you want to look back on some of those statistics and things we talk about. Um, but definitely like this can be a motivation, like turning this knowledge into power for us, just using it in that way. Like, I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a statistic. I don't want to fall into that. So I'm, I'm already feeling <laughs> like ready to push forward with, um, like you were saying, putting into that reserve, putting into that bank account for myself. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, the, and the, you know, the good news, the best news about this whole thing is we've, we've just talked about all the bad stuff, right? <laughs> and you don't have to be a statistic. Now we can talk about, you know, what you do about it. Like, what do you, if you don't want to be a statistic, now what? Yeah. So with that, like, yeah, Anthony, tell me what, what is your approach? What do you, what that you really believe in that you teach and that you've used in your coaching practice? Yeah. So, um, so when that's, that's, that's somewhat of a hard question to answer. Um, but, I think I, there's, there's an idea I want to press, impress upon everybody. It's that we should try and get the most bang for our buck. That's pure and simple what it is. Um, I like to look at it like an 80-20 rule, right? If we can do 20% of the effort, 20% of the education and get 80% of the benefit, that's something I want to do. And lots of things in life work this way too. You know, like um, if you're, if we're just talking about health and exercise, right? You, you just have to eat okay and you, and you just maybe move around a little bit and you can get a lot of the health benefits that you're going to get. If we're talking about it like a, an elite athlete though, is that going to be good enough for them? Absolutely not. They're going to have to give hundred percent and we're talking fractions of a percent of input that are going to make the difference between Olympic gold medal and Olympic gold silver, you know? So, but for most people who are just concerned with, I want to live a long time and stay in good health we don't need to put in that kind of effort, right? And we see the same thing play out if we talk about, since we brought it up before, if you talk about investing, right? We, 
you can, if you want to speculate on the stock market and make a whole bunch of money, you're going to have to really know your stuff and you're going to have to put a lot of time and a lot of energy into it. If your goal is just, I want to, you know, when I retire, I want to be comfortable. That's a lot easier to do. There's just some very simple principles you can follow and get there. Um, same one, one, one more analogy because you got to have three things for a list. Um, same, same, same thing when we talk about nutrition too. If you, um, you know, if you, if, if you really want to dial in your nutrition, make it, make it perfect. If you're, you know, some kind of, you know, competitive athlete, something like that, then yeah, it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. But if your goal is being healthy, it, it's really not that difficult. I, I, I made a joke to somebody one time that I was going to write the, the book that everyone needed to know about nutrition, but nobody would publish a book that was only five sentences long. I mean, literally I could rattle them off, you know, it would be eat a, eat a varied diet that includes all the major food groups, uh, uh, drink a lot of water, number two, or number three, if you want to gain weight, incrementally eat a little bit more over time until that starts to happen. If you want to lose weight, eat a little bit less over time until that starts to happen. And then number five, take a multivitamin, five sentences, there's your book about, about what most people need to know about nutrition. So I think that all, all, those, all those examples are to make the point that we can get a lot of the benefit with not all the education and not all the effort and not, or not as much of the effort. It's like we can train smarter and not necessarily always harder. So that being said, one of my fundamental principles about training, training general pops because of general populations, it's, it's a little different if we're talking about athletes, because again, they need that, they need that hundred percent. There's no other, there's no other option. They got to always be putting the most into it that they can. But for general populations, um, I, I believe much more in a principle, practical approach to, to training. So um, I, I say training, call it exercising, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, but that, that approach tends to work a lot better because at the end of the day, I can give you all the, like, you need to do this exercise, this many sets, this many reps. But at the end of the day, the exercise program that's going to work best for you is the one that you do, right? If you, if I, if I tell you to do all these things and you're like, I don't really like it, I'm not going to engage in that type of exercise, then it doesn't matter, right? It, even, it, it could be the best designed training program in the world, but it's just not going to work. So moving forward, when we talk about this, that's kind of what I want to impart is I can give you an idea of, of the general way that you might train if you wanted to increase bone density, let's say. But within that, then you need to decide, well, what's the thing that I like to do, right? I know that's the type of, of activity I need to do, but what specifically do I like to do? So I've, I've had this talk with a few of you already, I imagine. Um, and, you know, we, we look at your, your DEXA results at the end of your appointments and we say, okay, like you're, you're right here on the graph and your bone density is pretty good. If you want to, uh, you know, try and increase that, or if you want to uh, make, you know, make sure you're maintaining that, the best forms of exercise are usually uh, loaded resistance exercise and uh, high impact exercise loaded being there's some external load applied to your body, whether that's lifting weights or carrying heavy things, whatever, um, or high impact exercise, right? Something that resembles like sporting type movements, you know, running that type of thing. So also with the caveat that you shouldn't just go out there and start doing that tomorrow if you haven't been doing it already, but um, something to work towards anyway. Now, let's say you're like, okay, I can do this high impact exercise thing, right? But I don't, I don't like playing basketball. You know, I, I don't like sprinting. That's not something I'll, I'm going to stick to or enjoy, but I really like playing tennis. In fact, I just had a conversation um, with one of our participants who really enjoyed playing tennis. I said, great, you know, that's a perfect way to do that. Is it the absolute optimal way to do it? Probably not. But is it, are you getting, you know, eight, at least 80% of that benefit? Absolutely. So that's kind of what I would like to impress upon people as we move forward. There's, we talked about exercise like a magic bullet and it is, but it also takes a lot of hard work and there's no single magic bullet training paradigm. The most important, the most, the one that most resembles a magic bullet is the one that you can stick to. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Anthony. Yeah, it's I, I really like how you tie that into nutrition, like that 80-20 rule. And it's really, it makes it um, doable for folks. Like if we think, okay, 80% of my food is healthy and that 20% is where I can kind of have those fun foods as I call them. 
Um, likewise with our exercise, it's, you know, finding those activities we really enjoy that's we're going to be more apt to be consistent with. That's going to give us that bang for our buck. Um, Cause it's yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, 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 you know, with nutrition, it's, it's probably maybe even more of like a, of like a 90, 10, when it comes to education and effort, you know, like you get, you get a whole lot of benefit by just doing some really basic things. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's a great, and, and, and to your point, it's really important that you keep in mind that enjoyment piece of it, right? Dieting is no different. If I'm super strict all the time, is that really something I'm going to be able to stick to? Probably not. I, I get a lot of people ask me questions like, uh, you know, there's this Atkins diet or something like that. Is that effective? And I'm like, well, can you stick to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you can stick to that. Well, then it's going to work great. Or no, no, I, that sounds terrible. Well, then it's not going to work for you. You know, that's the, that's, that's the biggest question. It's not necessarily so much physiologically does the diet make sense. It's mm -hmm. can you stick to it, you know, because at the end of the day, if you can't, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great, like that, I see that being a great question to kind of ask yourself if you're looking for, you know, feeling motivated, oh, I'm going to tackle the keto diet, or I'm going to do intermittent fasting, like a 16, what is that 16, eight hour window? Um, yeah. Just asking yourself, is this something I can stick with? Um, yeah, to get that successful outcome and the quality of life we've been talking about, like, is this am I going to be just totally miserable trying to eat this way or trying to do these exercises that don't bring me any pleasure at all? Or, you know, yeah. Uh, well, yeah I, listen, like I get that way. I'm a, I'm like, well, with, with COVID, I haven't competed in a long time, but I do still consider myself a competitive power lifter. I lift weights in competition, but there's times when I'm just like, you know, I don't feel like having a crazy all out workout today. And mm -hmm. On those days, I'll still go to the gym or I'll still, well, the gym is in my garage right next to me here, but I'll still, I'll still lift weights, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of take it easy, you know? And, and it's, if I look at that day and I say, well, I didn't do absolutely everything I could and get down on myself, that's not helpful, but rather I look at it and say, you know, what would have been the alternative? I just wouldn't have worked out at all. <laughs> and is, is, is having done something better than having done nothing? Absolutely. So yeah, yeah all, those, all, all those things you have to keep them you gotta keep them at the front of your mind it's a it's it's easy to fail at something it's easy to fail at, at your health at you know your 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 training program your approach towards health if you set that bar too high for yourself and um it's very common that people do that yeah it's it, like we're touching on that that mental piece like you know it's important to like have these things in mind to keep us motivated mentally because that's a big part of creating change with our exercise and diet is our psychology piece uh, so you've shared a lot about biological sex that can come with some risk factors and on the other hand you know protecting your health is gender neutral and i'm wondering if you can talk a little bit now about the role that epigenetics plays and how our lifestyle choices factor into this yeah, sure. Um, you know, maybe let me unpack that word first. And maybe, yeah. maybe you all know what it is, or maybe you don't, but I'm just going to tell you anyway. So um, epigenetics is, we all know what genetics are, right? We have this DNA and our body reads it, and that's kind of what makes us us. Epigenetics are something that happens on top of genetics. It's, an, it's additional um, information that's coming from those genes that influences who we are, essentially, how we're made up physiologically. Um, that is, Genes over time, they get turned off, they get expressed more, they get expressed less. Um, and those things are, are influenced by environmental factors, factors in our environment sometimes. Um, the, most, the most common one is oxidative stress. So if we think about, um, I'm sure you've heard, you've heard about antioxidants before, right? Their main job in the human body is they deal with these little bad molecules we have called free radicals or reactive oxygen species, if you're feeling extra scientific. But those things, they actually bind to DNA and they can turn certain genes off or turn bad genes on, right? Bad genes being ones like oncogenes, the one that cause can genes that cause cancer, things like that. So um, as, we, as we age, there's no way around it. We build up that oxidative stress, just like our bone mass and our muscles, like they're a bank account. Unfortunately, so is this oxidative stress. It tends to build up over time. Um, in fact, some, some scientists at Harvard right now are doing um, some research into the sort of the um, actual epigenetic biological clock. 
and they can very accurately now predict your age based on how much of that epigenetic uh, uh, oxidative stress they see accumulating on, like actually on your DNA. Um, for just a, a, a fun mind cookie, as Natalie calls them. Um, but anyway, so, so these things too, do tend to accumulate as we age. But living a healthy lifestyle, exercise, we know that these things at least mitigate the, that, that progression of oxidative stress and slow it down. So though epigenetics can have a pretty profound effect on, on, a, on us as we age and sometimes a negative effect, if we exercise, if we eat right, that process is going to be curtailed and we're not going to experience the same amount of oxidative stress at the same age as somebody else who is not doing those things. So, I mean, and, and, and the difference is actually pretty profound. It's not like, you know, uh, it's going to push it back a year or something like that. You can be real healthy into your, into your later years um, by following some basic rules that I'm sure we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, exercise is also one of the best things we can do to prevent cognitive decline. I mean, yep. if you exercise before the age of 70, it has tremendous impacts on your, your yep. cognitive health. And even if you're exercising after, uh, so definitely something to jump jump on. <laughs> yeah, there was a, there was a um, uh, professor and he, he published a paper, this is probably 10 years ago now. Um, and they, 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 they had brought out this drug, this pharmaceutical company, they were testing it. And they said, because of its, you know, physiological effects, it was basically like exercise and a pill. And this, this professor, he said, okay, here's the, the benefits of this drug, right? That, that you're calling exercise and a pill. And then here's the benefits of exercise. And he listed like, you know, like 60 pages of just different things of what you, of what the benefits you get from exercise. So it's, it's, Exercise literally is medicine. Um, it's it's a it's a probably the best thing we can do to take care of ourselves. And um, you know anyone who, who doesn't believe that's they're they're wrong. Frankly, <laughs> I mean, just you go just move your body for a few minutes, and you you feel like I've been doing this quitting the sitting challenge with everyone. And the idea is like you know motion creates emotion. So. Mm -hmm as we move our bodies, we are able to like have those more positive thoughts and positive feelings and release those endorphins and dopamine. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah. And it's, it's, it's one of the, it's one of the best ways to deal with, you know, negative affect in your life, negative emotion as you life has momentum, right? That momentum can start rolling in the wrong direction or it can roll in the right direction. Exercise is one really good way to get that that rock of life rolling in the positive direction, you know, and it helps perpetuate that and increase that momentum as we go. So um, just even for that reason, just the psychological benefits, huge, huge reason to uh, uh, exercise. I had a, one, of our, one of our researchers at, our former, at my former institution, um, they were looking at the effect of exercise on cessation of addiction. So, I mean, exercise can treat so much you know it's in just in this simple thing that we have to engage in that unfortunately in, in in the modern world is something that you have to make the choice to do you know it would have been it would have been a lot easier if we were all you know chasing antelopes or something like that but we're not anymore so you have to you have to make the choice to do so but if you do you know you great benefits will be had yeah i'm so glad you mentioned that because i i've been hearing that a lot from so many participants that you know, a lot of them really enjoy being outside to exercise, to walk, bike, or run outdoors. So when that bad weather, like this ice storm that's come in, it can be hard to make that choice to exercise indoors. Um, like I, I am curious, like, what would your advice be to those people that are in that situation? Or like, even those people who are busy, like, you know, they've got a lot of things going on, like any kind of hacks or exercise tips? Yeah. So uh, first, first of all, again, going along is to your point, the best kind of exercise for you is the kind that you'll do. So mm -hmm. if you do live a busy life, I, I live a really busy life. I'm a a PhD student right now. I also teach classes. I work remotely for a company back home. Um, I also, um, you know, I'm a research assistant. You all, you all know me from that. I'm publishing. I'm writing grants. It's just all my time is taken up. But so I, I, I built a gym in my garage. It makes it a lot easier for me. I can come out here, get my work at it. Now, that was an, that was an expensive investment. And it's, uh, uh, you know, it's because it's really important to me. 
but that's not that's not the best for everybody, right? So maybe look at something that you can do in your own home. Buy some resistance bands. Uh, buy buy some workout videos. Even like it, anything that gets you moving, whether it's whether it's just around your house, around the block, wh wherever you are at work. Um, stand more at work. There's all, all kinds of different things we can do, and really. Again, I, I want to kind of impress upon everybody this idea of principles, right? One principle, one axiom we can embrace about exercise is at the end of the day, it means we need to move more. Mm -hmm. You all already know how to do that. So whatever setting you're in, whatever context, be thinking about that. How can I be moving more right now? Maybe it means you go walk around the building on your lunch break. You know, Maybe it means uh, uh, you park further away from the building on your way inside, right? However you can, like Natalie says, however you can hack that, right? However you can uh, uh, sort of put those, those situations in your life where you're, where you're forced to move more, the better. And I think that's, um, we, we should all embrace that. I, it particularly, I mean, I'm, I'm no exception to this rule. I do not move enough. I'm very busy. Um, and if I do exercise, I predominantly like to lift weights. But like we just talked about, what's better for my health is not lifting weights. I'm already very strong. I'm a very big guy. I don't even need to worry about that from a health standpoint. What I need to do is move more. I need to make my cardiovascular system healthy. So again, like we're, we're, we're all, we all have our own considerations and we're our own things that we need to work on. Um, it's just really important that you start doing them. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I have a pull-up bar that's on, on my bedroom in there that in between coach sessions, I'll do a few, a few sets and my husband gets on to me. He's like, one day I'm going to come home and that door is going to be broken down. Yep. <laughs> but yep. yeah. is, it, is, it one of those, is it one of those ones that just goes up in the doorway? Yes. Yeah. 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 Those are cool. I, I'm, I'm too heavy to use one of those, but those are, those are really cool. Like, yeah, that, 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 that's, and that's a great solution, you know, um, buying a yoga mat and getting some yoga videos. There's, there's so many different ways you can do it anything that gets you moving more. I see um, in, in the chat, we stretch and walk in place for about an hour every morning before we eat. There you go. You know, yeah. you're already doing that. Look at, look at your life. Where can I fit something in that, that makes me move more, that makes me exercise more. And regardless of whether or not that's the optimal type of training that you should be doing for your situation, again, it's better than you not doing anything. So yeah. And, and those and that and that momentum will increase, right? As you as you start to exercise more, you can sometimes you get bit by that bug, you know, and you're like, I, this is actually fun. I enjoy doing this. And or maybe you remember how much you enjoy doing it and you already knew. And then that that steam rolls, right? Yeah. Snowballs, you get you get into it more and more. So always moving more, always a better way to do it. We're getting some lots of brushing yeah. teeth. That's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, squat while you brush. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, we're thinking of these little hacks yeah. that we can do in our life because, yeah, our, our life conditions us like it, we've got to combat the sport of sitting. Like, and we so we do it with these creative ideas. Like, um, yeah, my, uh, my, my, my wife, it drives her crazy. I'm a, I'm, I'm a real morning person. Uh, it, a lot of you, when I see you, it's in the morning. That's because I'm the doc student that's willing to wake up earliest. But uh, um, I wake up and I'm just like wide awake. I have all the energy in the world. It's 5 a.m., you know, and I'm in, I'm in the kitchen. I turn on some Motown. I'm dancing while I'm making breakfast. And my <laughs> wife gets so upset by it. She's like, go back to bed. Why are you up this early? Blah, 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 you know, but that's that's, I'm moving, right? I'm in there and I'm moving a little bit. It's not, it's not, I'm not doing a serious workout, but I'm moving. I'm in there. I'm cooking. I'm dancing around a little bit. I'm burning <laughs> calories and I'm getting my, my body moving. And that's important. Yeah, and you're having fun, like yeah. getting that positive energy flowing. And gosh, we we it's learning how to tap into that. And it can be as simple as turning on some music. Maybe you don't even move your body; you just put on some music yeah. that makes you feel good. And yeah, and yeah, absolutely. Then I'm going. Yeah, I mean, we one reason we uh, uh, in all those surveys that you all have done at this point, um, we ask questions about negative emotion, about depression, things like that. We know those things are risk are risk factors for cognitive decline. Mm -hmm. Making you putting yourself in a better positive mindset in and of itself is good for your health, even if that doesn't involve, you know, you moving around and exercising a whole bunch. But just being in a better positive place, mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna do better health wise. Yeah, it it kind of reduces that stress, which you know stress can can impact the hippocampus, and yeah. that 
the hippocampus is what generates, creates those new brain cells. So if we can like lower that stress, we can be birthing new brain cells. And that's, that's what we want to be about. Uh, you know, uh, better than the opposite. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, I think it, a lot of folks were getting, as we age, um, you know, that idea of our body keeps score. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That a lot of, a lot of participants have experienced uh, death of a loved one, uh, just surgeries, uh, just emotional pain or physical pain, maybe recovering from surgery. So all of these things, like it can really impact um, that momentum as we're kind of talking about. So I think that's kind of weaving in, like cult cultivating that positive mindset is really important. Uh, and there's this one phrase that I've always loved. It's the idea that it's the decisions in your psychology, not the conditions of your life that creates a quality life. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm wondering if, if maybe you can share a bit more about that and any encouragement that you might have to, you know, our participants that ha do have those bodies that have suffered and endured a lot, like ha how to... Um, feel that sense of hopefulness that there is something that we can do to change. Yeah. I mean, I, my, my bottom line message to everyone is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are. Right. Um, everybody can take that first step right now, or, you know, maybe it's not your first step. Maybe you're taking the 10th step. It doesn't matter. Everybody can take that next step um, along the road. And it's, it's, you're never too old. You're, you're, you're never too out of shape. It doesn't matter. Um, you're never, you're never even too busy. You can always find a way to do it but you just, you, you, you have to do it. That's the, that's the big thing at the end of the day. And if you can take that first step, right, down that path and then take the next step and the next step, they don't even have to be particularly big steps. As long as you're taking steps in the right direction, you're going to get to where you're going eventually, right? It's, it's a, um, look at it like a marathon and not a sprint. You know, that's kind of a, a common analogy people use to talk about things like this, but it's very true in this context. We're, you know, we got all of us in this room have many years to live, I certainly hope, um, and I'm sure we do. So um, across the sort of, you know, gulf of those years, that's a lot of time for us to take a lot of little steps. And if you add all those little steps up over time, then you got a whole big long walk, right? And that's, that's, that's really important. Everybody can get there. Nobody's, nobody's prevented. Yes, we all have different circumstances, and it's going to be harder for some people than others. And I'm so sorry that's the case. I wish I wish everybody just, you know, this was super easy for everyone to do. Um, and, and it was just, it was no, it was no issue for anyone. But unfortunately, that's not real life. But what is real life is that it doesn't matter where you are on that spectrum, you can still get better, right? I, we would, we, you know, when I train athletes back in the day, again, I'm a, I'm a competitive weightlifter, I was stronger than the athletes I trained, but I was like, look, it's not about me versus you. It's about you versus you. Mm -hmm. And if you can make that next little bit of progress over time, those things are going to add up. And, and you two years from now is not going to be the same as you today, you know, and that's mm -hmm. so that if I could impress one thing upon all of you, it's that it's just it's take those steps regardless of how small and eventually you're going to go on a good long walk. Oh, that is such a beautiful analogy, really like just taking those baby steps. And at the end, you'll have this long walk and all this ground you've covered. And, you know, it's it really was makes it more um, of an effortless walk. You know, if you're just taking those baby steps every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like you have to take, you know, a big giant stride, right? Like I said, it's sometimes count your wins, right? Mm -hmm. It can it, exercise over time and I think we'll talk a little bit more about this later but it, it iterates on itself we have this idea of progressive overload and exercise right you have to constantly be progressing otherwise you're not going to adapt anymore but that progression doesn't have to be massive right it just needs to be I need to do nominally more a little bit more than I did yesterday mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be I need to you know I jog today so I need to run tomorrow it certainly doesn't need to be that it needs to be, you know, I jogged for 20 minutes today. I'm going to jog for 21 minutes tomorrow or, or even less, you know, whatever it is. I'm going to go a little bit further. I'm going to, you know, I stopped at the stop sign. I'm going to go around the corner. There's, there's, there's a million different ways you can progress it. And also progression is a trend, 
right? It's not something that happens every single day. Otherwise, no one would ever rest, right? You got to rest sometimes. But progression is a trend. So over time, you need to see things improving, right? But there's going to be some days where you're just not going to have it in you. You know, like I said, there's days where I just don't have it in me to go have a killer workout in my gym. I got to take it easy that day. And that's fine. As long as over time, I'm moving in the right direction. Again, taking that positive momentum and taking that nice long walk in the right direction. Yeah, it's kind of back to the idea you shared earlier about training smarter, not harder. And, you know, listening to your body and and that is a key in itself that will help you get those gains and those results that you're looking for with your strength and with your stamina. Uh, yeah, yeah those progressive challenges. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so while you're on that note, yeah, just go ahead and share with us like that. I know that was one of your strategies to um, help us all with boosting our strength and stamina as we age. Uh, what are some other... Uh, of those strategies that you have for yeah so um progression like we talked about is is really important um but i think it's even simpler than that exercise or let's call it training because training is exercise with a goal so training is something that needs to be challenging that doesn't mean it needs to be grueling hard like you, you it's so hard you can't finish it but training needs to be challenging it needs to impose some type of challenge on you, otherwise it's not effective. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important single factor to know about exercise. You could be doing everything else wrong, but if you were doing something that was physically challenging for you, you're still doing it right. Mm. So that's, that's the number one thing I would, I would impart to everybody. If you're doing that, it takes care of so much of the other stuff just in and of itself. So we, we have these sort of finer points in exercise science that we talk about training frequency. That's generally how many times a week you're, you're training um, volume. That's how much training you're doing at any given instance intensity. That's how hard your training is. But if all you say is I'm going to make my training challenging, all the rest of that stuff just kind of falls into place. And in fact, in my own training, even I used to, very painstakingly program out all of my sets and all of my reps. I'm going to do this many at this weight and blah, blah, blah. I, all of my training, it's, it's color coded now. I literally have a green, a yellow, and a red. Hmm. And if it's, if it's green, it's a pretty easy day. I'm basically recovering that day. I'm going to get in, get a workout. And if it's red, I mean, it's full go. I'm going to lift as, as hard as I can. Hmm. And that's, that's all you need to know is, am I challenging myself at all, right? Am I, is, is this challenging to me? And if the answer is yes, then you're doing it right. Uh, and, and, it, and, and the rest sort of falls into place after that. Um, and, you know, there's, you, can, you can drill down more into the nitty gritty of, 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 of how training works, um, some, some kind of broad principles. If we, we've talked about bone loss, we've talked about uh, sarcopenia. So if, you're, if your goals are developing more strength, developing uh, stronger bones, then again, resistance exercise, high impact type exercise is going to be best. Um, if your concern is like me, someone who, who is cardiovascular health is more of a concern, then just moving more is going to be your kind of your ticket there. And uh, one, 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 inst or one, one, one interesting kind of just observation about the world is going back to the idea of, of what males needs and what, and what females need generally speaking males are the ones who like to lift weights and females are the ones who like to run and do cardio but uh, and and again this i don't want to make generalizations about everyone on the planet it's different for everyone but if you look at the broad you know the broad sampling of all people but what you should be doing for your health is probably exactly the opposite of that right like males need we need to move more guys like get out there move your bodies um that's going to be the best thing for you to help curtail some <laughs> i see it you know? um, <laughs> And then uh, uh, um, females right? lift some weights. Don't don't be scared of it. Um, if there's if there's a, a try it out. You know maybe it's something. Maybe you, maybe you find out you don't enjoy it. But there's a whole bunch of other different things you can do. Carrying things, whatever it is. Um, but don't be afraid to make that step. Right. And don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone and try something new. Mm. Yeah, I know a lot of us would probably be saying to our partners, "Hey, you need to run more. Or you need to lift heavier weight." <laughs> 
<laughs> more ammo <laughs> yeah right there you go if, oh if, if nothing else we gave you that tonight <laughs> yeah or you need to go walk off your blow off some steam go for a walk <laughs> right <laughs> great relationship advice too <laughs> oh goodness I don't have, certainly certainly probably shouldn't be given that <laughs> Cheryl says grow muscles I, I like it that's very good uh, yeah it's all what about those little just challenging yourself like if it's give me one more rep or one more minute or um walk you know do one more of something uh yeah yeah and if, if you're doing that usually everything you need to worry about is taken care of right there um mm -hmm. Again, it's sort of like, you know, the, the book that no one would publish, but it's only five sentences long. The same thing applies to exercise too. As long as you know for your specific, you know, whatever your goal is, right? The general principles that will get you there. All you got to do is just challenge yourself within the context of those things, right? If it's, if it's you know, I'm, I'm, I have osteoporosis and I need stronger bones, right? So you say, okay, I need to do some type of resistance exercise. Mm. Yeah, maybe you try lifting weights, you don't like it. Right. So maybe you try, um, you know, doing some weighted carries and you're like, ah, this is all right, but it's not for me. Then maybe, maybe you try um, doing some doing some more heavy labor in your garden or something. Like that. And you're like, you know what? I really like carrying around these heavy garden gnomes. I can get into this thing. Right. I like digging trenches and I like planting plants. Great. You know, then that's the thing that works for you. Now, just challenge yourself a little bit more every day at that thing mm -hmm. until you get to where you're going. Mm -hmm. Anthony, thank you. This has been, you, you've shared so much good quality. Like you've, you've talked about the scientific side of things. You've explored gender issues and how that plays into our health concerns and risk factors. And you've even broken it down into some practical ways we can apply this knowledge. And, you know, that's, that's really what the knowledge is power, but really it's knowledge is execution of what you've learned. So I, hope, right. I hope that today that uh, that folks who are listening that, you know, there's something that you're going to take and execute on, if, even if it's like the just the one more rep idea, one more minute, challenge yourself in a small way or um, to venture out, do some strength training or guys get out and be more aerobic. Um, but I hope you've taken something useful from, from our discussion. I'm going to open it up to Q&A comments. Um, if anyone has a question for Anthony while he's with us, I think we have a little bit. Well, maybe we've got a couple more minutes before the hour. Um, I, I, I'm okay. Um, I'm, I'm out in my garage right now. And my timer is basically, I, I have to have my heater off. So when whenever it gets too cold for me to exist out here anymore, then 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 I have to go back inside. But yeah. but. Um, uh, uh, no, I got, I got plenty of time. I, I'm not speaking for you, Natalie, of course, if you got to leave, that's fine. But if you're worried about me, I got, I got plenty of time. I'm more than happy to help anyone who has a question. Yeah. I have one, I have one question. Yeah. Um, so we are trying, uh, we're getting close to 70, both of us, and we're trying to, uh, keep our weight appropriate and, uh, we're trying to do, I guess, kind of you briefly touched on it, the intermittent fasting is an option. Mm -hmm. And so by doing a little stretching and a little bit of walking in place before we eat, is that is that the easiest way to keep our weight stable or drop it a little bit? Or is there another thing we could add on to that? Well, I mean... You can you can always add things. I mean, that's not that's never going to be bad if you're adding additional movement, additional exercise. Um, in terms of what's the absolute best optimal thing for you, again, I don't know. Is, is intermittent? Let me ask you a question: Is intermittent fasting? Uh, is it something you enjoy? Is it working for you? I I don't think we're having any problem. We're we're trying to keep our <clears throat> our starches in the morning mm -hmm. and our vegetables and protein in the evening. Uh, and we're we're not having any problem with that. We're just not. Uh, I, I just is the is the is the scale moving in the direction you want it to? Mine's not. His is. <laughs> no, serious. He's yeah, lost no, ten. I... No, really. He's lost yeah. ten pounds. I've lost like five, but that's it. And I've been doing this for like over six, eight months. 
Mm-hmm. So, so you kind of you kind of plateaued a little bit. He's still, well, Luke, and you're kind of in the yeah, same you were for a yeah. while. But I think my thing, I've got some something going on wrong with my metabolism. I don't know if it's just being 66 that you know that could be the issue. I don't. I've got thyroid problems, so mm-hmm. that could. But I'm working at it. The thing is, is I haven't gained, so that's and that's what I was telling her. The positive it stays the same. <laughs> Because she could easily be gaining another five or ten pounds, that'd be like easy as pie. Absolutely, and that and that in and of itself is a win. Particularly, um, you mentioned that you have thyroid issues. I have them as well. Um, luckily, controlled through medication. But still, I mean, that's that's definitely it's very easy for me to gain weight as well, and not the good kind of weight. Yeah. Uh, so I no, I I definitely hear you there. Um, my 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 advice. Um, Sir, it sounds like you're Jerome. Is that your name? Yeah. All right. Sorry, sorry if we met before. I meet like 200 people in these in these studies, and I, it's hard it's harder to keep everybody's name straight. Um, it sounds like you're doing great. You probably need to just keep up what you're doing. Um, if you're if that scale's still moving in the right direction, again, don't look at it like a like a sprint. It doesn't need you don't need to get to where you're going tomorrow, right? Um, and if it's and if it's not, then do a little bit more. Um, Susan, mm. since you're plateaued generally in that case what you're going to need to do is kind of kick things up to the next level it doesn't need to be it doesn't need to be crazy right it's all all these things are small incremental steps that we make it's maybe i'm going to reduce that reduce that portion size down just a little bit right not nothing crazy right i'm not telling you right reduce it down just a little bit maybe i'm going to move around a little bit more you said you're already stretching you're already moving before you eat maybe you add one more of those a day for a while and just see how it goes Okay. Eventually, though, what I know will happen, because at the end of the day, the, 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 human, the human robot, it's a smart robot, and it's really good at, at adapting to things, but it, it, adapts to, it, it, it adapts in a predictable fashion. So if you do that, I know things will start going in the right direction eventually. You just maybe need to take a couple extra steps along the way to get there. And that's fine. That's what happens to everybody, right? There's things that I'm no good at. I really want to learn how to play an instrument, but I'm terrible at that. It does not come easy to me. So I'm going to have to take some extra steps to get there. So there you go. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. I, I hope that answers your question. And I'm sorry there's not a magic pill solution to anyone. Oh, no, that. I um, it's not but, like I, you know, crave to be super skinny or anything. Right, I right. just would, I would like to get down to a certain weight. So some of my past clothing would fit. And, and I don't want to, um, I want to be able to feel really good and not feel like tired out maybe. And yeah. cause I'm pretty tall. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, all, I'm five, eight and I weigh 155, but I used to weigh like 140 and I felt really good. I mean, I was running around and of course I was younger too. Right. And I had a problem with my gallbladder and that made me lose a bunch of weight. So you know, yeah. things happen when she you get, was as skinny as I was. When you get sick, <laughs> you lose weight. You know, and then. But. Yeah, and, uh, uh, first of all, it doesn't sound like you're too. You're not too far from there. You know, fifteen pounds. It's it's not it's not nothing, but it's also not you know you're, you don't you don't got to lose a hundred pounds either. So there's that. Keep that in mind. The other thing too is, you mentioned getting down to a certain weight, and I don't know if you're actually referring to an actual number or if that means something different to you. But if you are referring to a number, I, I would say don't worry so much about that. A much oh, better I, good, yeah. good. A, a right. much better I don't, measurement is I you don't said, usually get on the scale that much, so yeah. I don't have to worry about it. It's it's really not too important. Um, a, a no. much better measurement that you already mentioned was right. are, my, are my old clothes going to fit? You know. Well, actually, but, I've noticed that even though I haven't lost numbers, my I went down a size because of some of the. Extra, you know, just movement. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 I've noticed that. So, one, one thing you'll see too, uh, you know, everybody's kind of heard this analogy muscle weighs more than fat. You know, uh, if you yeah. start moving more and you've even just built a little bit of muscle, that's very dense tissue and it's going to offset some of that fat weight, you know, so it, that, that you're probably losing at the same time. So, again, I, I wouldn't be overly the, the scale, the scale is useful. I'm not going to say never get on a scale or something like that. That's, sure, that's sure. Good, but but don't be overly bought into no, what that not. number is. And it sounds like you're not, that's great. Yeah. Um, but to anybody else, anybody else listening, for sure, don't, 
don't worry too much about that. There's right so many now. things that it's, are important. It's intriguing thought that, uh, that muscle and fat are just a little bit different. Sure they are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so say that again. Yeah. So, so muscle tissue is very dense. So um, a lot of people have heard the sort of expression muscle weighs more than fat and it does, um, you know, by unit of size, muscle tissue is much more dense. So um, if you build muscle because you're moving more and exercising um, and you're at the same rate, you're at the same time, you're also losing body fat, your weight might stay the same, but your body composition, that is your ratio of muscle to fat might be improving. <laughs> So, yeah. so, but it's good to keep those things in mind. Uh, just to, I mean, you guys have met me, you, you know, approximately what I look like. Well, he, he can't, I'm in the program, but he was, he was not chosen. Yeah. His, oh, blood, sorry, his yeah. blood levels were too good. Yeah, <laughs> you, we didn't want you. <laughs> but I guess. Over, regardless, most of you have met me. I'm a big guy. Right. I'm in six, three, I'm 270 pounds, 280 pounds. Um, but, wow. I'm, but, but I'm not overweight, but, <laughs> but. If you look at the, the doctor sort of metric of BMI, which only takes into account your height and your weight, I'm very obese by that metric. But you met me, I'm not, I'm not an obese person, but that's because of exactly what you asked about. I am a muscular person. So muscle, that, muscle. That, muscle, that muscle and fat, you can be at a certain weight and not be extremely obese, right? So again, just kind of providing more, um, more support for the idea of maybe don't worry too much about the scale. All, all of you just right. worry about how you feel, worry about how your clothes fit. Thanks. Those kind of things are way Thanks. more important. Because I, because I care about her, but I don't want her to feel sad if she's no. She, she I don't. I'm, I'm not a magazine kind of a gal, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, it was very good. That was. I don't want to take up all the time. Maybe some other wow. folks have some questions. Very positive. Yeah. Thanks. He's got another one. I know that Cheryl had some comments for us. Um, she was asking about, uh, I think she kind of settled on a vest. She was asking for ideas for um, adding weights to exercises. Uh, and she was wondering like, would a waist with some quarter rolls work if you put them in the pockets? I mean, honestly, yes, for a while. Um, and, 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 and a lot, a lot of, so a lot of those type of, of exercise modalities, right? I'm going to uh, fill milk jugs with water and use them as dumbbells or something like that. Mm -hmm. those, those things, if maybe they're not a great solution long-term, right? Because eventually it's going to become easy for you. And you're, again, you're not going to get that challenge anymore, but it can be really good uh, short-term as a, as well, just a, just a good training modality, but also it's a good um, experiment, right? Do I even like doing this? It doesn't cost you anything to just fill up your old milk jug with water and try doing some dumbbell exercises with it. Um, and that's a much better way to break into the world of dumbbells than to just go out and buy an expensive set of dumbbells that you find out you don't like and just end up collecting dust in some corner of your house somewhere, you know, or a, or a, a, a you know, an exercise machine that unfortunately more often than not just get, ends up being used as a coat rack or something like that. But if you, you know, kind of like you said, the rolls of rolls of quarters in your pockets, something like that, just to feel, do I like this type of loaded movement? It can be really beneficial for that reason as well. And also just to chime in there, like there was some concern about balance, like if you're holding free weights and like Anthony was suggesting in the, in the discussion, if challenge yourself, like get a little outside of your comfort zone. Maybe, you know, you sit in a chair and do some exercises with the dumbbells or you're by a chair and you do a one-arm bicep curl to help you with that balance um, but don't be afraid to lift that weight because that's we want to help build that bone density and build that strength as we age yeah and that yeah that's a great point there's so many different modalities that can allow you to gain engage in resisted exercise um, mm -hmm. even if it's not just you know throwing a barbell on your back or something like that um, that's you know that's that, that's a good that's a good way to do it but there's a million other ways you can do it too. Um, and, and, and the other thing I'll say is, um, num first of all, all of this stuff, again, comes with the caveat that be incremental about it, take things slowly and learn how to do it right. Um, because again, safety is the number one thing. I mean, if you were talking about making these baby steps, but if you, if you hurt yourself and you're you know, laid up in bed rest for three weeks, you're not making any baby steps at all. In fact, you're probably taking some steps backwards. So again, safety first, very important. But one thing I'll say is uh, resistance exercise, lifting free weights, 
is one of the safest exercise activities you can engage in if you know how to do it correctly. Um, and 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 uh, the sort of spectrum of, of correct is, is pretty broad. So when we look at injury rates across different sports about different training modalities, weightlifting is almost all uh, free, free weightlifting, uh, strength training movements are generally always one of the lowest in terms of injury rates. So um, yeah, just, just keep that in mind. But again, always, always with anything that you do, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, weightlifting or playing basketball, whatever it is, make sure if it's not something you're doing already, that you're going to approach it slowly and work your way into it. Yeah. That's some good advice. Yeah. Anyone else have, have a question or a comment? All right. Anthony, thank you again. This has been so, so good. I really enjoyed hearing, hearing your feedback on all of this and yeah. Um, high, high five to Cheryl. She's giving me a high five. I think she gets one of those. Um, uh, yeah, it was a pleasure being here. Um, I hope we get to do it again sometime. Thank you all of you for showing up. Um, I hope that I was able to give you something out of this that you can take with you and hopefully integrate into your um, health coaching experience with Natalie. And I would encourage all of you, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and contact me at the, at the DC Marvel study. Um, or a really good idea is you have this awesome health coach right here who can either, either tell you the answer, or push you in the right direction. So um, always refer to, oh, it was a clap. Okay. <laughs> Um, Let's clap always, it out. <laughs> yeah, always um, uh, use the resources at your disposal, and Natalie is a great one. Oh, thank you, Anthony. Well, cheers for us all living a, a long, healthy, and quality of life. <laughs> all right. okay. Well, everyone, stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. A pleasure, everyone. Have a good one. <laughs>